Hey everyone, welcome to another look at a long-term project that I've been working on. Now I made a video about this a little while back and a lot of people asked for another update video because people are curious about what this actually is because I haven't yet given anything away. And before I go any further, I just want to say that I would absolutely love to tell you guys exactly what this is, the whole story, right now. But the people who approached me for this, the customers, wanted the exclusive idea that I had. And that's a big part of it. You know, this is an idea that I came up with, it's never been done before. And part of the deal is that it's something that's exclusive. So if I go talking about this now, I mean, I don't mind if you guys take my ideas, that's what all of this is about. But a big company may go and mass produce it or something and you know, then it won't be a first and it won't be exclusive for my customers. And, you know, that's an important part of this. So you'll certainly find out what it is coming up later and you'll find out exactly what this is and the whole story. But the comments on the last video about this, I was surprised to see that a lot of people don't even think that it is computer related. Well, you know me, it's certainly computer related, but well, I'll say that it's a computer component, but what this actually is, is a plug. And the reason you create a plug is to create molds. And so that is what this is for. We're creating the plug, which actually is the final product. Because from this, you create the molds, and then you use the molds to create the finished product. So this is the shape, the surface of the final product, and that's why this is the most time-consuming part of this process. This is where all of the time goes because not only do you have to get a shape, and I actually have employed a local artist to, to get the shape for this. I thought that was the best thing to do, to you know, find somebody creative enough to, to come up with a shape based on, you know, what the customer requested. And, you know, then the surface has to be absolutely perfectly smooth because that defines the surface of the finished product. So this is a plug. The next step is to create molds. And what I'm doing here is vacuum forming composites. That pretty much says it all. And it really gives it all away. But anyway, you can see that it's really changed since last time. I mean, the main thing is that it's different colors. You can see all of the different materials that have been used here. So this is fiberglass and body filler. And when you take on something like this, I mean, this is a truly massive undertaking, particularly for one person you know, me. This is something that's usually done by a whole team of people and experts and, you know, the equipment, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment, all of that. And so it's a massive undertaking. And always with firsts like this, you run into brick wall after brick wall and massive setbacks. And we did have a massive setback. I actually finished this after months of work it was ready for the final steps and the final steps take really no time at all compared to building the plug and we sent it off to the the expert to be finished off and he was going to create the the molds and do the final step the vacuum forming and he actually knocked it over and smashed it and we repaired it again, and then we gave it back to him, and he wet sanded it, but he didn't just wet sand it, he completely soaked it in water. And the water went up through the base, which is actually wood, and soaked into some of the materials that, well, most of the materials this is made from are waterproof, but some of them are not. And so it warped and cracked and buckled, and it really completely destroyed it. And this was two massive mistakes made by an expert in the field, which set us back months and months. So 
It's now in the final stages again of shaping. And what I'm about to do here is paint it with a thick surfacer, which is going to fill in all of the little tiny pit marks. And it will give me a nice surface, which I can continue to remove all of the ripples and bumps from, which you can see here. So I have here my beautiful Devolbis spray guns. And the one I'm going to be using today is this one. It's a primer gun. It has a 2 mil HVLP nozzle. And the reason I need the 2 mil nozzle is because what I'm spraying here is basically like a primer. It's a surfacer. It's very thick. It's actually two pack. So I can't use this gun here because this is for top coat and clear coat has a 1.3 millimeter nozzle. But these are the guns that I use. I use these to spray the Case Labs Magnum TH10A for client build 20. And, you know, before I got these, I really didn't think having a good gun makes a difference, but it certainly does. If you compare a high quality gun like this to a cheap gun, the difference is absolutely incredible. And you know it straight away, as soon as you start spraying, the finishes that you can get there is definitely a big difference. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can still get a good finish with a cheap gun, it's just a lot easier with a gun like this to perfect all of your adjustments and to get that perfect surface. I've just finished painting and you can see that it's a massive improvement but because we've just finished doing major shaping with fiberglass and body filler the first layer of paint is only going to show up all of the imperfections which is very important because they all need to be removed. You can see all of the pit marks here, the scratches from the 80 grit sandpaper that we've been using to shape but more importantly, the flat spots, the dips, the bumps, you can kind of see it down on the bonnet here. And there's actually a big run here. And that's because I've deliberately laid on this surface as thick as I possibly can. I mean, a little bit of a run here and there doesn't really matter at this point. The point is to get it on as thick as you can to kind of save time. Instead of doing lots of coats and sanding in between, if you can get it on really thick, it gives you a lot more to work with when you start sanding. So risking a little bit of a run here and there at this point is something that needs to be done. But certainly a big improvement. And at this point, I'd say we're about two thirds of the way through the entire process.
It's now seven hours later and I have been sanding the entire time without stopping. So it was a lot more out of shape than I expected. I expected to be able to just do about half an hour to an hour of sanding between coats at this point and that's it. But you can see that I have done a lot of shaping. I found some major high spots and you can't accurately tell the shape by just taking a quick look at it. You really need to you know, lay hands on it all over to feel the high spots. You need to get the light right, get down on the correct angles. And this takes a lot of time. And I find that you don't actually really find the shape until you start sanding. And often it's just best to sand with your hand instead of using blocks or anything else because then you can really feel the curves and the shape. And if you have a good eye and a good sense for this kind of thing, you can sort it out by hand. Something else I meant to mention, and no doubt you've probably noticed, is that we actually filled in the windows. There was windows on both sides and on the top. And that's because there's two ways of doing openings like that. You can make them in the plug or the moulds. And we are going to make them in the moulds instead because it's probably going to be a bit more accurate and a bit easier. That's another coat of paint finished and we're definitely back to square one now with the paint because of the massive amount of shaping that I did before this coat of paint. And I'm really happy with the shape now. I made some major changes. I took heaps of material out from here and same at the front here. So now the curve in the middle across the top is perfect because that was really bad before. And I have now perfected the symmetry. I spent a lot of time, roughly seven hours sanding, looking at the shape, trying to perfect it. And I think now it is very, very close. It's now just a matter of removing all of these pit marks and small lines and imperfections, which is just going to require sand, paint and repeat. I'm thinking roughly about 10 times before I can then do the final paint job. And it's also going to go back to the artist, the woodcarver, a couple of times in between so that he can take a look at the shape and work on it a little bit if he wants to. You can see a major run up the front here. I've already mentioned why I do this. It's quicker to lay on a lot of extra paint knowing that you're going to get a run to fill holes like that instead of waiting for dry time and sanding in between. It does save a lot of time because removing a run like that at this point, I mean, we're still using 80 grit sandpaper, so it literally only takes 30 seconds. But... I'm going to do another update when I do the final coat of paint and the final coat of paint for this I'm going to be testing a special effect for an upcoming build. It's going to be pearl volcano orange with a red candy over the top and I think it's going to look just incredible on this thing and mainly because this needs to have an extreme gloss finish. And that's very important. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time buffing and polishing the final paint job and then waxing and preparing for the next step, making the moulds. But anyway, we have a very highly skilled and experienced person to do the moulds in the final steps. So it's looking promising and very exciting. Remember, if you enjoy our content, to check the video description for how you can join us in our goals for Singularity Computers. These videos are only possible thanks to our Patrons. So you can thank our Patrons for all of the content that you enjoy from Singularity Computers. Thanks for watching.